It's hardly shocking that Taylor Swift would pen a breakup album. The pop sensation has meticulously crafted some of the most unforgettable lyrics by revealing intimate details about her romantic relationships and heartbreaks in her past 10 albums. She's been in a romantic mood for the past five years. Her six-year relationship, British actor Joe Alwyn, served as the inspiration for songs such as Delicate, Lover, Invisible String, and Lavender Haze. Swift and Alwyn became so close that Swift went to London and wrote together on her Grammy Award-winning albums Folklore and Midnights, using the pen name William Bowery. Then, it was revealed that they had broken up in April 2023, a month after Swift began her record-breaking era's tour. People magazine was informed by an unnamed source that it was not dramatic and amicable. However, fans assumed the singer would address the fallout when she revealed her 11th album, The Tortured Poets Department, at the Grammy Awards in February. They quickly pointed out that the title resembled The Tortured Man Club, a group chat that Alwyn and fellow actor Paul Mescal had exchanged. Then, during a Melbourne concert, Swift revealed to the crowd that the album was her most therapeutic work to yet. It kind of reminded me of why songwriting is something that actually gets me through my life, she stated. I've never had an album where I needed songwriting more than I needed it on Tortured Poets. It feels very much like a cleanse. The vocalist seems distraught and perplexed. In a way that we have never heard of, vulnerable. She sings of crying at the gym, comfort eating kids cereal, and being so depressed she can't even get out of bed. Her heartbreaking acceptance of defeat and her departure may be heard on so long, London. She bemoans, had a good run, a moment of warm sun, but I'm not the one, as layered backup vocals mimic the city's church bell's melancholy farewell. It's on par with her best ever written work. And even when she's glowing from her era's tour, the morning shroud still covers her. She sings, breaking down, I hit the floor, all the pieces of me shattered as the crowd was chanting, more, on the deceptively optimistic song I can do it with a broken heart. Afterwards, she questions if rusting my sparkling summer was the goal and wants an explanation. That line may be heard in the ferociously named song The Smallest Man Who Ever Lived, which begins with a tired sigh and builds to a crescendo of rage and paranoia. Were you a cell spy or were you writing a book? Will all of this be declassified in 50 years, and you admit why you did it? Swift addresses the conflict in her relationship as well as the pen's sharpness in the album cover notes. It was a phase of mutual manics. It was an act of self-harm. She says, it was house and then cardiac arrest, and then smirks, this poet's face starts to smirk. Because my best writing is about the worst men. Indeed, this record is about breaking up. However, Taylor Swift didn't become who she is today by following the rules. She has defied expectations throughout her career, going from pop sensation to teen queen country star and, during the epidemic, becoming a folksy author of nuanced character studies. She blurs the boundaries between her personalities on the tortured poets department, writing as a fantasist and a diarist at times within the same song. The technique reaches its pinnacle in the song, But Daddy I Love Him, a captivating and dazzling ballad about a girl from a small town who, much to her family's dismay and that of all the wine moms, runs off with the local bad boy. However, the song's lyrics also touch on the finger-pointing controversy that surrounds Swift's rumored but unconfirmed romance with lead singer Matty Healy of the 1975 earlier this year. Healy has been accused of racism and misogyny throughout his career, both of which he denies. Some fans felt let down by the connection and thought Healy was an improper companion. In her song, Swift responds by saying, I'd rather burn my whole life down than listen to one more second of all this bitching and moaning, I'll tell you something about my good name it's mine alone to disgrace. Such scathing lyrics keep the record from being overly depressing, but Swift's more vindictive tendencies may be muffled by the production, which was provided by longtime partners Jack Antonoff and Aaron Dessner. The soundtrack is replete with the mellow synths and subdued rhythms that perfectly complemented the hypnagogic atmosphere of her last album, Midnights. That works when she lets her melancholy side show on the subtly simmering bad down, but when she writes something sour and playful like Who's Afraid of Little Old Me? Layers of echo and gauzy strings smother it. Additionally, some of her vocal techniques, such as the rapid pitter patter of her verses and the hooks she shouts for emphasis, have grown too recognizable. However, a couple of the tunes hint at new musical paths. Florida, a duet by Florence and the Machine, justifies its many exclamation points with a flurry of percussion and guitars that accompany a tale about running to the Everglades to elude capture. I can fix him, no, really, I can. S understated tremolo guitars also provide the ideal foundation for Swift's depressingly self-deluded words. 
The Tortured Poets Department is an uneven record that doesn't have a clear-cut radio hit like Shake It Off or Anti-Hero. But since Swift is now controlling pop music, the album will nonetheless sell a ton even though it leaked a day before it was supposed to. Additionally, the singer closes the record by teasing her next phase because she likes a good cliffhanger. Named after the first, It Girl, of the 1920s, Clara Bow examines how women are shaped and marketed by the entertainment business, with men in suits, controlling their time in the spotlight. The final stanza and the final lyrics of the CD are directed towards the upcoming young ingenue of pop music. We're loving it in this light, you look like Taylor Swift you have an advantage over her, she didn't. The future is bright. Amazing. It's a classic example of self-awareness, bridging the perceived gap between her and the audience. Swift is aware that her current world tour is the apex of her career and a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to dominate culture, and that younger, perhaps less hungry performers are vying for her attention. She's ending a connection with the tortured poets department, but she may also be ending a way of life and work. Is her most recent era coming to an end?